In this video, I'm going to explain what a leaky gut is and the most important cause I'm almost certain you would have never heard of, but must know to heal leaky gut. Hello, my name is Dr. Iggy Suse, and I'm a functional or integrative medical doctor and I've been in practice for over 35 years, treating patients and especially those with gut-related illness. Welcome to my channel, Gut Health for Life where I'll be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what leaky gut is and how you can easily prevent or treat it. First, I want to cover a little anatomy about the gut to make sure that we're all on the same page. The gut is a tube that runs from the mouth to the anus. Now the space in the gut, the hollow part, is part of the external environment. It is not part of you. For instance, your mouth is not all you. The teeth, the gums, the inner cheeks are part of you, but the space in your mouth is not part of you. This is part of the external environment. In the same way, all the space in, in your gut is not part of you. It is part of the external environment. The part of the gut that is you starts with the gut lining. Your gut lining acts as a barrier that protects you from the external environment. But it also has to detect digested food to allow that to be absorbed and keep away undigested food, bacteria and other unwanted compounds like bacterial toxins. Within that tube, lives the gut microbiome that is made up of bacteria, 500 to 1,000 different species, and different organisms like fungi and viruses. They're all part of the external environment, and they play a crucial and very intimate role in your development and your ongoing health or disease. The bacteria, as you may know, is made up of friendly, helpful bacteria, and unfriendly bacteria that can cause inflammation and disease. The more diverse the friendly bacteria, the better your health, and the large numbers keep the unfriendly bacteria under control. If you have more unfriendly bacteria and less diverse bacteria, that can mean more illness. This imbalance is called dysbiosis. To put it simply, this imbalance of dysbiosis, that is, less friendly or good bacteria and more unfriendly or bad bacteria is the cause of or contribution to disease. At the very core, the problems start with damage to the gut lining cells. What is important to remember is that the gut lining is only one cell thick, like a long string of very thin beads, a single layer each bead, only the thickness of a single strand of hair. It needs to be this thinness as it needs to allow digested food to pass through. The downside is that it is easily damaged. To protect against damage, the body has to place in place a number of mechanisms. One is a thick layer of mucus that is made by specialist cells that are part of the makeup of the gut lining. Some friendly bacteria also help by stimulating these specialist cells to produce more mucus. So the mucus layer is a barrier that insulates the bacteria from the gut lining. If the mucus layer is depleted, then the gut lining is no longer protected and prone to damage. In other words, you get a leaky gut. The question is, how? What depletes the mucus layer? How and what? To explain that, I need to now talk about some very important but not so well-known information about the microbiome that lives in the large bowel. Most of the friendly bacteria that keep us healthy live and thrive in an environment that is mostly devoid of oxygen. So to emphasize, no oxygen in the lumen of the colon or, gut or, or, or large bowel is good. We also have the friend, not so friendly bacteria in the colon, but they are more versatile in that they can thrive in both an environment with oxygen or without oxygen. I want to emphasize this important 
point low. In the healthy state, that is where there is no oxygen in the lumen of the gut, the good bacteria thrive and they keep the bad bacteria under control. The question is, are there situations when these, situa when these bacteria are exposed to oxygen? Yes, unfortunately. Let me explain. I want to switch now from talking about the gut bacteria to the talking about the gut lining cells. These cells are part of the large intestine or colon, and they need ox the colon cells need oxygen to survive, like every other cell in our body, and they get that oxygen from the blood circulation. The oxygen, once it gets into the gut lining cells, can diffuse into the gut lumen and be exposed to the bacteria. The mucus layer is the barrier that prevents that oxygen from getting to the good bacteria. I want to repeat this important point. The mucus layer is the barrier that prevents the oxygen from getting from the cells to the good bacteria. So you see the mucus layer provides a two-way benefit. The gut lining cells are protected from the bad bacteria by the mucus layer and the good gut bacteria are protected as well by keeping oxygen away from it. Now comes another very important point. The good bacteria live on fiber that comes mainly from vegetables that we eat. But if you do not eat enough vegetables, that is, there's not enough fiber for the bacteria to live on, they can turn to the mucus layer lining for food for their survival. So here is the leaky gut scenario. Not enough fiber in the form of vegetables, so not enough food for the friendly bacteria, they turn to the mucus lining for food. That lining gets diminished and the barrier is depleted or gone. Now oxygen from the gut lining diffuses into the gut lumen. Here the good bacteria in the presence of oxygen cannot thrive, but the bad bacteria can survive in oxygen, can thrive, so they multiply and with reduced or no mucus barrier can damage the gut lining. So you have a leaky gut. This is probably the most important cause of leaky gut and so easily preventable in the first place. So what are the symptoms of a leaky gut? They are bloating, gas, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort, fatigue, brain fog, difficulty concentrating, food sensitivities. These are the commonest symptoms, but they are also very common and general symptoms and can be associated with many different conditions. It has to be diagnosed by a practitioner experienced in dealing with this condition. I have many patients coming in having had the Google treatment of leaky gut for months with no improvement as they actually had a different problem altogether. Treatment in this scenario described is, is to increase the amount and variety of vegetables. Most of my patients with gut issues insist they're eating a goodly amount of vegetables, but on questioning, they're only eating one to three vegetables per meal. It is the variety that you need, and I say you need 30 different vegetables a week. That includes herbs. Remember, not enough vegetable fiber leads to a loss of the mucus layer, leads to bacterial dysbiosis, leads to damage to the gut lining, leads to leaky gut. The remedy a big variety of vegetables. One caution, if you have food sensitivities or allergies, you must seek help from a qualified health practitioner to be able to work through the allergies. A question you may now ask is, what fibers are best? I'm glad you asked, because the next video is on just that, fiber and the wide ranging effects it has on your health, and some of those effects may surprise you. Please subscribe to my channel below so you don't miss any future videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.